Hey folks, Wendy and Jeremy here with Elevation Games, and today we're going to give you a preview of an age contrived. This is a really fun game. Uh, we, we picked up a prototype of it while we were at Shucks mm -hmm. uh, from the folks at Bellows and Tent. Um, they are planning to kickstart this in March. Um, and uh, it's, a it's a heavy Euro... Uh, for sure, uh, but it's a it's really fun with some really neat mechanisms, especially the physical components. Um, I would say the components on this thing really set it apart. I, I I have never seen components like this before, so there may be a thousand games like this out there, um, but this is the first one I've ever seen, uh, specifically around the monuments that you can see around the board here. So. As you can see, there's monuments all over the board here. There are six total, but each one of the monument pieces are held together with magnets, held in place with magnets. And that's what you're building out through the game. Um, and I just think it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, as you can see, this thing is gorgeous. Um, that that's definitely makes it stand out when you first see it. Um, Really super high quality components, really beautiful artwork, um, and and really unique with the with the magnetized construction of these different monuments. Um, in this game, you are playing as gods. Um, there are six different gods, five. I believe. Five, five different gods um, that you can play as. Um, they each have their own unique powers. Come with these lovely little minis. Um, and as you go through the game, you're going to be basically using these little energy tokens um, to both fuel your actions and to place them on the board. Uh, the, the point here is to bind your energy to different places, uh, whether that's through building monuments or uh, adding them to pillars of civilization. Uh, you're basically helping develop the mortal civilization um, as we go along here. Um, and essentially, the more energy you have bound to the board um, at the end of the game, the better, the more points you're going to get, and the more likely you are going to be to win. Um, the other really unique thing about this game is you have this um, transmutation device uh, mm -hmm. that functions kind of as a conveyor belt. Uh, you're basically, on your turn, you can either take actions, um, and again, you have to spend energy. Um, each of these uh, transmutation tiles is kind of split into two. You've got a top half and a bottom half. Um, you spend energy from the bottom half to fuel your actions, so you obviously you have to have an energy above that action tile to take it. Um, and then you place energy on the board from the top half of these. Um, and so basically on your turn, you're either doing that, taking actions with, with your energy as much as you would like, or you're advancing. And when you advance, uh, you take one of these, slide it into place, the other slide off. It literally works like a conveyor belt. Yeah, I love the way that the device functions. Um, and you find a really good strategy is thinking through your next three or four plays and which design of a uh, transmuter tile are you gonna need? So they don't, it's not one size fits all. You can see this one has two uh, places to hold energy that go onto the board on top and then one energy to take an action with on bottom. You have others that just have uh, one of each and mm -hmm. there are, um, I was trying to find it. <laughs> There are ones, this one doesn't have any energy to launch at top, but it has two actions that you can take on the bottom. So looking through all of the different tiles that you have coming up in your queue and thinking through how your device is going to be laid out um, as you advance through and which tiles, <laughs> which tiles you have um, where, like where that energy is going to fall out in your board. But the way that the devices are constructed, the way that they're laid out, um, is where I think a lot of your strategy link in an age contrived is gonna fall. Also, just a design choice. 
um, that Bellow's Intent put into this is your device, and let me slide everything off of it. <laughs> your device, um, and there's one per player, it's reversible. So the only thing that this changes is the aesthetic of your player board. It doesn't make it any harder or any easier. It's literally the exact same, um, whichever side you're using, but it is neat to allow you to choose which aesthetic that you want to play with. As you can see here. Yeah. Um, and it, re it really is, Wendy's right, like the, a lot of the strategy here is trying to plan ahead, you know? Um, as this conveyor belt device moves along, you, you're kind of planning for future turns, making sure that you have stuff that makes it towards the end of your conveyor belt. Because if you spend it all at the beginning, then you're going to have future turns where you just have these tiles moving through with nothing in them, and there's very little you can do. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of strategy thinking around that. Um, and thinking around where you're going to place things. But you also have to be careful because you're all competing um, largely to build these monuments. Uh, each of these have um, symbols, each, each of the monument pieces have symbols on them, um, and you have to match these with your different types of energy tokens. So for instance, uh, the ship cell here has uh, comp two compass energy um, and one, what we've been referring to as rock energy. <laughs> they um, have actual names. They I'm going to pull my player guide out so that I can tell you the actual names yes. of those guys. Uh, constructive energy or compass, as uh -huh. we call it. And then there's invertible energy or rocks, as we call them. And then there's a third one, the generative energy, which we call rose. Yeah. So we, you know, we're going to shorten everything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and these behave in different ways um, when they're activated on the board. Uh, but, but again, the most important thing here is, is you have to match these as you place them down. And so you're competing with the other players to a certain degree uh, because the last person who puts the last piece of energy on this completing it, they're the one who gets to bind their energy to that monument and actually build the piece onto it. Um, the other people will get rewards, so you are rewarded for contributing to it. Mm -hmm. You just don't get the the final victory points. Um, you don't get the favor with the with the um, locals. Yeah, um, and so it's you know it is very euro in that way, in that there's not a lot of direct um, conflict. Uh, it's a lot of indirect. Um, and it comes closest, I think, to anything I've played in the, re the recent fad of um, cooperative competitive games. Uh, in my opinion, those usually fail on one axis or the other. Yes. Um, this one manages to strike a good balance where um, you are technically competing, but obviously this game is very much an engine builder. Um, and so you're really focused on what you're doing. Um, and you're rewarded even if you don't get that final piece. That's right. Um, when I hear the phrase uh, cooperative, competitive, I just roll my eyes because nope. <laughs> <laughs> but this, they designed this quite brilliantly in that you have to rely on one another um, to contribute to these uh, monuments and to the movements and to the way that you expand and build out the board so if you are not playing with your other players in a cooperative manner then nobody succeeds here so it is like jeremy said the first time that i saw a cooperative competitive game that actually is just that um and it makes the gameplay it just kind of adds one more layer there are so many layers to this game um but that just adds one more layer to this that makes it interesting and competitive as you go through yeah um it is you know as i said it is an engine builder like over time you're going to be purchasing upgraded tiles for your uh transmutation device uh you're going to be putting uh, these link tokens out on the board um, <laughs> that allow your your avatar to travel around the board, but they also 
unlock more powers for your specific god that you're playing. Um, and so, again, just over time, it, things are going to build up and get more powerful. And because there is so much stuff going on, um, like most typical Euros, right, there's always an, there's always an option. You, you're, ne you're very rarely in a situation where, oh, there's just nothing I can do this turn. Um, there's we play this game a lot, do. and I don't think that, at least for me, I've never, not one time, just looked at it and been like, I'm about to just waste an entire turn. Because yeah. you can be advancing your device, you can be moving along the board. I mean, there are things that you can do with every single turn, no matter how big or how small they are, and each one is important. Mm -hmm. So when you have a full device and you have all of these options for actions that you can take, you feel like you're sitting on top of the world. <laughs> and then when you do, so and your turn lasts a long time, then when you're doing something like advancing your device, whether it be by one or by two, it's just like, okay, well this, this turn is kind of lame because all I'm doing is extending my device. But as you do that, as you take like those small turns, and advance your device, it seems so small, but you can start seeing new options laying out as mm -hmm. you do that. So it's, as far as like your turns go, there is not one turn that you can take where nothing happens, where you're not advancing towards your final goal. Yeah, it's, it's a very careful balancing act. You are balancing upgrading, <laughs> uh, upgrading your device, uh, actually building monuments and getting uh, energy bound onto the board, um, binding to pillars of civilization, or uh, you also have some achievements over here um, that you can score points for as well, but those also require you to bind energy to them. <laughs> um, and then, you know, that final piece is very important, um, and it's, uh, we found when we were learning the game, very easy to overlook, you don't start with all of your energy tokens. Um, no. Several of them are locked on the board here, and you get them as rewards for doing things like completing monument sections. Um, and so there's always that sort of balance of, okay, do, do I want to take a reward that's going to let me upgrade my device, or do I need to take more energy? Because again, as you bind energy to the board, yes, you are scoring future victory points for that, but you're also narrowing your options and running out of energy that you have to play later <laughs> you find that pool getting smaller and smaller yeah and there is nothing more frustrating than when you advance your device and you go and you put your new transmuter tiles onto your board and you don't have enough energy to completely fill those device uh device uh transmuter tiles up so it's just like oh man so going in and remembering to draw your energy out of the side uh, really, really is important. <laughs> yes. And something that we learned uh, through playing. I feel like each time we play this game, it gets a little, I don't want to say easier, a little easier to manage everything that's going on on the board because there are a lot of things going on on this gigantic, beautiful, amazingly designed board. <laughs> yes. Um, which I think is a good segue into... A warning I suppose um, to think about uh, if you're looking at this uh, this game is very heavy um, that's not really even fair it's heavy we've played heavier I think the challenge here is that it's not because it is so fantastical it is not locked to much recognizable real-world stuff sure so the theme doesn't help you keep up with some of those rules and so there there's a lot there's a lot of iconography here it's well done iconography but it takes a while to learn how everything works and to be able to read it instantly when you look at it um simply because you just don't you know you don't have a reference for space rock symbol right like um eventually yeah, <laughs> eventually you get used to this and you know oh this is this is the energy that um is going to snap back and let me place it somewhere on my transmutation device after it gets used and um you you learn what the different symbols do but it 
definitely takes a little bit um, to grok all of that and get to a point where you're just playing smoothly and not having to stop and be like, okay, what is this? So the first time that we played, you have these really nice uh, player aids mm -hmm. that go with you, and then you have the rule book as well. The first time we played, we were, you have your player, player aid in one hand, you have the book in the other hand, the rule book, trying to flip through and, and remember what everything means. And with each successful playthrough that we've had, you see uh, the rule book, stayed out um and then there's fewer and fewer references to the player guide to a point that i was only referring to the backside where i was looking at um each individual god's abilities and what they can do yeah you could definitely feel a progression um <laughs> it so obviously this game can look overwhelming on um, this nice, big, beautiful board with all of these different pieces, all these mm -hmm. complex interactions. Um, by the final game that we played, um, it took us an hour, maybe, hour and a half. Yeah, I think it was about an hour and a half, and that yeah. was playing out of four counts. So it, it... It, it moves really... Once you get all that stuff internalized, it moves much faster than you would expect. Yeah, it does. And the fact that there's no, like, set rounds as you're playing. There's no end-of-round activities you have to do. There's no flavor text that you have to read as you're advancing through the game. It helps, I think, make the gameplay a lot more smooth. You don't lose the momentum momentum that happens uh, when you have to stop to read through. And I like the story parts of games, so, like, don't get me wrong here. Uh, but it can kill the momentum or, like, kill that... that uh, kind of vibe that you set at your table playing through it this game there are no end of rounds there are no it, you just play through your turn and then it moves to the next person who plays their turn and you just constantly rotate throughout the game around your table and so the game that causes it to just like have that constant fast movement i'm going through the whole thing so as a point of comparison uh the first game of this we played i felt like it took three hours maybe it um, took a long time. Yeah. It took a long time also to set up the first time. Yeah. I Part of that comes from the fact that we have this really nice prototype, and so I was scared I was going to break it as I was setting it up, and just like general sorting that came from the fact that there were other people playing this at Shucks before we brought it home, so there was just like some general sorting out that needed to happen. But it took a second to set up. It took a second to sort out, and then it took us a long time to play through because we kept referring back to the rules. We kept referring back to everything. So it was a long, a long, long gameplay. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think it just underscores your point, right? That once you do, if you take the time to push through that difficulty curve and get to the point where you can read everything um, quickly, the game moves pretty briskly, um, and you can get through it much, much faster than you would expect for a game this size and, and complex. Yes, and that setup time, um, just like with Spirit Island, just like with Gloomhaven, Brass Birmingham, like any game uh, that's gonna that's bigger than Splendor, if we can say that, any game that has a lot of components or a lot of moving parts, the first time you set it up, it's like, I never want to play this game again because I don't want to have to go through this. To like, after you've played it a couple times, like I could set up Spirit Island in about five minutes blindfolded. I could set up a scenario for Gloomhaven in about 10 minutes, which is insane if you think about everything that goes with Gloomhaven. <laughs> Um, and then this game, through our playthroughs over the last couple of weeks, we've seen the exact same thing. That that setup is pretty smooth once you are familiar with all the pieces and where they go. Um, and the iconography that's telling you, use this for a three-player game, use this for a two-player game, use this for a five-player game. Yeah. Um, I do want to mention uh, one upgrade component that we have seen, just because it was so cool. Um... When we got the when we picked this up from it's Zyder, so <laughs> Chris uh, at Shucks, uh, they had upgraded um, holders for the transmutation devices. Uh, they were they're metal, um, and the transmutation the the cardboard transmutation device sits 
in it, um, and you slide your tiles in. Um, li literally, just you chunk one in one end, and the other shoots out the other end. Um, plus, on top of that, uh, when you want to take your energy tiles out and place them, you literally e eject them. Each each tile section has a little trigger that you can flick, and it literally shoots the tiles out. <laughs> um, I have no idea how much that particular upgrade is going to cost uh, when they kickstart this guy, uh, but I can tell you it was really neat. <laughs> um, I didn't touch it. I was scared I was going to break it. <laughs> but I sat there and was like, shoot another one, shoot another one, shoot another one. And the poor guy doing the demo was just like, okay, <laughs> do you want to do it? No, I don't want to touch this thing. Um, but I want to just keep watching it like a kid. I just sat there. That thing was so rad. It's a rad upgrade. Yeah. We will be purchasing that upgrade, even if I never touch it, because again, I have a tendency to break things. I will just make Jeremy sit there and shoot energy out all day long. <laughs> Be like, Jeremy, shoot another one. <laughs> um, I, I think that's the only uh, upgrade that we know about at this point. Again, so the plan is to kickstart this in March, this coming March. Um, we don't know pricing yet. No. Um, so we can't really speak to that. Uh, and again, this is not a review uh, because it's not a fi it's not final. Um, it's pretty close. I don't think he's going to make any major changes at this point, but still, we don't want to review a game that isn't completely final. So, um, I will say we have had a lot of fun with this version of it. Um, but we will definitely revisit, uh, when we get the full thing. Um, we're definitely going to back it when it goes up. Um. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Back it with, I feel like... I'm going to just treat it like Spirit Island, where the answer to which of these upgrades do you want, my answer is just going to be yes. Um, and I can say that, I can say that on this side of a Kickstarter, the same way I can with Spirit Island, because I know that this game is not a play it through one or two times and you're done. You're never going to play it again. So those upgrades are just kind of wasted money. Um, with Spirit Island, we play it so regularly, all the upgrades we have just elevate that game playing experience. We played this game almost every day for two weeks. <laughs> um, and each game that we have played has been different. Each game that we have played has been fun. It's been challenging. We've won, we've lost, we've learned a lot. We've played different characters. And as we go through, I find that there's a really high replayability here. That's so important to me. I feel like um, you'll hear me talk about the importance of replayability and the importance of representation. There are five gods in this game. There are two feminine gods um, of the five, which I feel like is awesome. You can't really ask for better unless you know there's five. Um, but it, so you've got that inclusivity included in with the game as well. The game is fun. It's fun. It's fun every single time we play it. I was worried that over time the um, that the um, novelty of the magnet-driven monument building was going to wear off. I just thought, you know, that's going to reach a point where it's like, man, I don't even want to get those out. Like, we'll just know. Like, <laughs> as it's going through, it's just, you know, putting the little metal things underneath the board is probably the hardest part of setup. And I'm just like, do we really need that? I never reached a point playing this game as much as we have in the last few days. I never reached a point where I was like, ah, eh, we don't need to put the monuments up. I want to see the beacon every single time. I want to see this guy every single time. This gateway, I just think that they're so lovely. The forge, I mean, every single one of them, they are designed brilliantly. The art on them is absolutely amazing. And that novelty never wore off, at least for me, maybe for you, but never for me. This game is one that when we when it comes out on Kickstarter in the springtime and we get that fulfillment, then this is one that will be in regular rotation on our table. I can say that now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a it's 
clearly a very fun game. Um, it's it's more than just cool components. Um, I can definitely say that, having played through it um, several times now. Uh, it. But the it, components are yes, really cool. <laughs> yes. Um, the first thing you think when you see this is, wow, these are some of the coolest components I have seen in a board game in a minute. Um, but I can tell you for sure, we both can tell you for sure, having played through this several times now, um, there is more to it than that. Um, it's it's more than just a pretty face. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's very solid gameplay here. Um, and so it's worth uh, keeping an eye on, if nothing else. Yeah, and um, I do want to talk here, too, about the player accounts that we've played at. Because I feel like this game, and, and this is still in prototype stage, he's still playtesting it, really, just to make sure you don't bump into any unforeseen issues mm -hmm. uh, without them overseeing, is the balance of the game is brilliant. I think that we've played with each of the different gods, all five of them. Um, we've each played a good mix of those. So putting uh, Rujni up with Ignotas like in a head-to-head -head action plays very interestingly. But then, you know, when you play with uh, Arion versus uh, Multinek, you get a different uh, dynamic there. It's just interesting all of the different players, but you don't find that there is one character that you're playing that just decimates everybody and that it's really not fun to play with them. There's also not one that's so hard and complicated that, you know, I want to save that character for Jeremy because he can handle that kind of character and I can't. Like, they are all really well balanced. We've played this at a two, two player count, three player count, four player count. Um, we, found or I found that the they play it plays I think pretty equally at all three of those different player counts so the player count for this game is two to five um, and we haven't played it at a five player game but we have played it two three four and I didn't think that if I had to say does this play better at two three or four I think it plays really well at all of them now your strategy has to change based on how many folks you're playing with um, because there yeah. are limits to places you can put stuff on the board. There's limits to how you're going to build your monuments that you don't bump into as much at the lower player counts. Um, but it's really fun when you're playing with that many people because you just it just kind of adds, again, another layer to the strategy that you're using to play the game. Yeah, um, and you literally play with less monuments at smaller player counts. Um, you, you only have, you always have the beacon in the middle here, um, but in addition to that, you basically have the same number of monuments as you do players. Um, and so at two players, you've only got the beacon plus two more monuments to work with. Um, but all of that balances out because, of course, it, you get those higher player counts. You've got more people competing for pieces. You also have different components at different player counts. So that is just another level that the designers over at Bellows Intent put into the design of this game. So your upgraded action tokens are different if you're playing with a higher player count than with a lower player count. You get different bonuses over here on the bonus track based on how many players you're playing with. You get different um, upgraded uh, upgraded uh, transmitter tiles. Sorry, took me a second to put those words into my mouth. You get different upgraded transmitter tiles depending on the level of um, player count that you're playing with. So it does scale, I think, quite brilliantly between that two and that five player player count. Yeah. Um, so... A really fun game, one to keep your eyes on, um, an age contrived from Bella's Intent. Uh, Man. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll link to uh, their website in the comments. Um, so uh, if you're interested, go follow them um, and pay attention when they, when they hit Kickstarter. Keep an eye out for this Kickstarter because this game, you don't want to sleep on it. <laughs> you don't. Um, it's amazing it's one of the best games that i've ever played i'm putting it up there with spirit island don't look at me like that i'm wow. putting it up there okay. with spirit island 
which is my favorite game of all time ever. If I could only play one game forever, it would be Spirit Island, but I'm gonna put this one up there with it. It's beautiful, it's fun, it's complex. It is, it is everything that you want in a heavy game. I cannot recommend it enough. I'm obsessed with this game. I'm obsessed with everything about it. There is not one thing on this board right now that I'm like, well, if I had to kick something off, I would kick off this or I would kick off the tile bank. No, there I would keep it all and I'm obsessed with every single piece of it. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I was going to ask if you had any final thoughts, but... That is my final thoughts. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what else I could say. I will just sit here and talk to you about it all day, but... Um, <laughs> I don't know what else I can say without being repetitive or too fangirlish over a game. Um, well, if you like this um, and you want some to see some more tabletop nonsense from yeah. us, uh, be sure to like and subscribe here. Um, we'll have some more reviews and some more stuff uh, going up uh, regularly. Uh, right now we've been releasing uh, our spooky season content. Yeah. Um, that'll be coming to a close here pretty soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, an age contrived, Bellows Intent. Look it up, pay attention. Do not sleep on this game. <laughs> and we'll be back soon. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>